The SEC West is a three-horse race, and all those teams have some flaws. Let's think about LSU. When Jane Daniels is on, they're a very difficult team to beat. I mean, he had a he had a rough first half against Arkansas. No one's doubting that. Uh, he just wasn't on his game. Okay, but when he's going, man, I mean, they're going to be a little bit up and down from time to time. They were last year. They're probably going to be again this year. Malik Neighbors, unbelievable. Brian Thomas is continuing to emerge as a legit number two. And then you think about the front seven defensively. I mean, this is a group that was dominating against Mississippi State. Well, what the heck happened? I mean, the Hogs scored on their final five possessions, which is something that's really concerning. We know the secondary is not great, but the front seven, that's got to be the calling card of LSU with the talent that they have in the front seven. It hasn't been the case, man. Just very inconsistent. Alabama's another team that, hey, a ton of mistakes. Milrow had a bad interception, but I thought he really did a nice job in the second half of that football game. There were some bad sacks taken. Okay, like, you know, on the third and five, you lose nine yards to, you know, from the 21 yard line. Now the field goal is a 48 yarder, which Will Riker made. But I mean, that's not a guarantee. Seth McLaughlin snapping it over his head. They've had a handful of poor snaps. He had four low snaps against Texas. Against Ole Miss, he sent one a little low, sent one over the top. And then he also had a bad snap against Middle Tennessee that Milrow bailed out and turned into a 20 yard touchdown. But still, and that's been a little bit problem. So uh, they just have a lot to clean up. There's still some penalties. They've been better in that regard, but it's still something they got to address. I mean, Milrose got, I think, do a little bit better job in coverage. I think he sometimes still predetermines, but I thought he looked much more comfortable in the second half. The offensive line is still very much a question mark. Four sacks given up on Saturday. That brings the season total to 16. And not all of them, by the way, were on the offensive line, I might add. Uh, but I think the biggest concern is that, man, this is still a run imposing group, right? Like they're going to pound the ball. They're going to do that well. They had 131 yards on 45 carries. That's 2.9 per carry. And when you adjust for sacks, they had just 160 yards for 3.9 yards a carry. That's not what you want, okay? And then one more thing, on gains on runs that went for zero yards or yards for a loss, that happened seven times in their rushing attempts. Yeah, in the sacks, that's 11 of Alabama's 64 plays. So 17% of their plays went for zero or negative yards. That's not what you want. So they got to be more efficient. But here's the thing about Alabama. The defense is really rounding into form, man. They are really starting to get it going on that side of the ball. I think you recognize, hey, five defensive linemen had a huge impact in the game on this past weekend. Deontay Lawson goes down in the second quarter, and you see the depth of Trez Marshall, Jihad Campbell, uh, Kendrick Blackshear to kind of fill in. So they, they clearly have some depth at that position. And then the back end, after what was an unrecognizable performance a couple of weeks ago against Texas, they're starting to find themselves. I mean, Kool-Aid McKinstry the last two weeks have been off the charts. Terry and Arnold, I think he led the team, by the way, with eight tackles, broke up a couple passes, had the interception. That group in the back end, I think as we continue to move forward, has a chance to be a legit unit, an elite unit there in the secondary. So that's going to be a huge factor. And then A&M, who I think is very much in the mix in the SEC West. Okay, Connor Wigman going down in the ankle injury. I have not seen an update as of right now. That's something to be concerned about. What we talked last week, the most important position right now in college football that you could seriously make a legit argument about might be the backup quarterback, the most unheralded position. But Max Johnson goes in, doesn't miss a beat. I mean, he had his first five attempts for 115 yards and really broke the game open in a lot of ways. Well, granted, they're going against really rough quarterback play on the other side. Both Peyton Thorne, Robbie Ashford missing a lot of open guys. It, it was not good. But you think about where Aggies have been the last couple of weeks on third down. Man, they are ridiculous on third down. They allowed Auburn just three of 15 on third down. If you look back the last two weeks, they've allowed four of 37 on third down. I mean, that is ridiculous. 11% overall on third down conversions. I mean, they've successfully converted... Everyone they've played, even in the even in the Miami game, they're giving up just 20% on third down, 10 of 49 overall. So they're playing really good situational football, and they can really get after the quarterback. They had seven sacks in the game this past weekend, and that was the most obviously generated by an Aggie team since 2017. So there's three teams right now in the SEC West that I think are good. They all, I think, have some flaws, but I also think it's going to be really interesting to see how much better these teams get as the season progresses.